the sweetness of Al-Iman. Those who had this experience, they are the only ones who know what happiness in this life means. How to attain this beautiful and high status, we will find out shortly insha'Allah, so stay tuned. <laughs> praise is due to Allah, we praise Him, we seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evils of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah misguides, none can guide. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone, who has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is His servant and His messenger. Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of your show for the sake of Allah. Today, inshallah, we will deal with a very important subject which is the importance or the high position of brotherhood in Al Islam. And it has become clear to us, inshallah, now the great reward Allah has prepared for those who have love for one another for the sake of Allah. And Islam. Always, whenever it calls to something, it provides with the guidance to achieve that goal and the means to protect it and enhance it. So today we have, inshallah, with us Brother Abdul Rahman and Brother Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, today's subject, inshallah, as we have come to know about the importance of brotherhood in Al Islam in terms of living in this life and in terms of attaining Allah's pleasure and getting his reward on the day of judgment. Now, in order to achieve that and achieve true brotherhood in the way that Allah wanted us to have it, uh, we can find in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, means that would help us uh, find or achieve the brotherhood that Allah has prescribed for us. Mm -hmm. The first thing we would like to talk about is how to choose brothers. Because you know, your brothers, these are your friends, you are going to learn from them, you are going to be influenced by them. Well, you have to be at least, you have to have something in common. There are different things that are related to this kind of friendship or this kind of brotherhood. A very important aspect, as I said, is who to take as your friend, as your close friend, as your brother. There are requirements, there, there's criteria. We have to know how this works out in Islam. I would like to ask Muhammad first, uh, normally, how would you choose your best friends or your brothers? what things you will look, what kind of things that you look for in their character or their behavior or anything else before you have them as brothers or close friends? Well, uh, certainly it would be like uh, uh, a practicing brother, inshallah, on the right manhaj. Mm -hmm. uh, naturally, it helps a lot uh, uh, pulling you uh, upward. So the first thing you are looking for in that person or the person that you take as a close friend is that he has Iman. So that you help one another in the way leading to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, do you have any other things that you would like to consider in that person that you take as a yeah, brother? Yeah, surely it would be like a uh, nice company hanging out together, uh, having fun, uh, uh, doing some sports, playing some uh, football, uh, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so a person that you can get on with. Yeah, yeah, get along with, yeah. MashaAllah, that's a very good thing. Yeah. So you said the first thing that you would be looking for is an iman. And this is the criteria in Islam. We always look for Iman. What about you, Abdul Rahman? How, what would you be considering in a person to take as a friend? Uh, actually, first of all, I'll, I'll consider his, uh, his Islamic beliefs. Mm -hmm. Second of all, because I like doing sports, like, like brother Ma Ma Muhammad, I'll, I'll consider that he does sports so that we, you know, we encourage each other. Uh, I would like him to be an achiever. Not someone who's uh, just laying back and so an ambitious doing, person, an ambitious been. person, okay. so that we we help each other to to move in life, to move up, not go down. Okay, mashallah. So it it seems to be a natural thing that human beings, before they take someone as a friend or make a friendship with him or a brotherhood, we would consider what kind of person he is, because there there are requirements. Mm -hmm. 
it's, it's not the case that you get along with everyone in this world. People are different, people have different inclinations and different characters. Sometimes they're just two people, they can't be together. They can't agree on even one thing. So this is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. This is why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stressed the point or the importance of choosing your brother. And the first thing is about al-Iman. When he said, الرجل على دين خليله This hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira. الرجل على دين خليله The man is upon the same religion as his closest friend. فلينظر أحدكم من يخالل So let one of you consider who or whom he takes as a close friend or as a brother. So it's a very important issue. It means uh, your friend, your closest friend, or the people you hang around with, usually, these are the ones who determine who you are. And it's been said sometimes, in some languages, it's, uh, it's a proverb. They say, tell me who your friends are, i tell you who you who are. are. Exactly. So it is about your friends. Who your friends are, you'll be the same. And in Arabic we say, as-sahib sahib. The friend, your friend, he drags you to where he, wherever he is. So if he's a person who falls into sin, then he will take you to that. If he drinks alcohol, one day you will fall into that. If he smokes, mainly the people who smoke, their friends are smokers as well. Yeah. This yeah. is a natural thing. And this is one of the laws that Allah has made in this life. These laws govern this life. And this is one of them. People, ha people who, we say that in English as well, birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. The birds who look the same, they, flock, they are together. And this is likewise with human beings. People who have the same inclination, the same disposition, the same interests, the same beliefs, the same character, the same culture, yeah. they hang around more with each other. This is what it is. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said that be considerate or consider everyone that you take as a friend because you will be upon the same religion. You will be the same as his. So you should, and as we know, the reality of this life is it's a test. So we need someone to help us pass this test. Pass we don't test. need someone to drag us behind mm -hmm. and make us fail the test. No. We want to do, earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we look, look for the people who uh, will guide us towards so, that way. So it's uh, like uh, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa did what he said. Like, al mar'u ala deenu khalili. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam selected Allah. also uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. MashaAllah. Which is the, like, the best man in the ummah, inshaAllah. That's it. That's yeah. it. And uh, you can see many examples actually in the early lives of Muslims yeah. how they implemented that fact. And they used to know the person. If a stranger came or someone, they met a person for the first time, to know him they would ask about the people he usually hangs around with. Yeah. If they are good, they know this person is good. If they have problems, if they, okay, they are doubtful about them, then he has got a problem. He's just like his friends. Yeah. So it is a, it's a way that would, it's something that would help us in our lives, when you deal with people, look at a person's friends, you know who he is. You know how to deal with him. Yeah. You know what kind of belief he has in his heart. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us against taking the disbelievers as allies, as close friends, as guardians mm -hmm. and protectors. And he said you should take the believers. Because if you have the same faith, then you will agree with them. Uh, and the Prophet sallallahu clarified it when he said that the example of the a uh, good friend and the evil friend or the one that you hang around with the good one is like the musk seller mm. if you come across him at least you will find from him a good smell or he would give you some perfume or you would buy from him so in all cases you will gain something beneficial yeah, yeah. this is the same example as a person who has iman you will either hear from him something beneficial you will learn from that or he will give you something good out of him because of the love the brotherly love that we have in Islam, mm. so that's good for him. Or, or you will benefit more and more from him uh, by maybe being more cl or closer to him. Like a smell, nice smell. Yeah, and other things. So mm -hmm. the believer is always a good companion. You will get, get always something good from him. And he gave the example of the evil companion as the blacksmith. So the blacksmith, he has a bad smell. Because of the kind of work he does, mm -hmm. you will always find bad smell. So if you deal with a bad person, and you hang around with him, you will get some of his evil. Either the rude character he has, or you would hear an insult from his mouth, or at least you find a bad smell, which is maybe your reputation will be affected because of that. This person is notorious. He has a bad, he has a bad uh, name in, 
around, people know about him, has a bad reputation, he will come to you because you hang around with him. Sheikh, uh, what about someone who wants to do, for example, dawah? Yeah. Uh, so he hangs out with all kind of people, even bad, good. Mm -hmm. So that he gives them, even yeah. though he has a strong personality. What, what, uh, That's a good example. Uh, it's a good question as well. <coughs> when you give dawah, actually you are giving these people dawah but you are not spending your time mainly with them you sit with them you mix with them as long as you are giving them dawah mm -hmm. okay you have the upper hand here you control the situation yeah. but if they are going to spread their mischief and you are sitting around now you are falling into error so if you are hanging around with people who are not really practicing people who do fall into some sins you have to control the situation if you have no control over the situation it's going to be worse for you it's going to affect you because we mentioned uh, before, if you remember, we said that evil and sins are contagious. You can get the contamination. You get contaminated and you become affected by that. Exactly. So the first principle in Islam is to protect yourself. Sure. Of course. Protect yourself first, then you enjoy the good and you forbid the evil. So it is a very important aspect and principle in Islam who you hang around with, who your companions are. Mm -hmm. And was known by the people uh, from the early generations, they said if a person hides his innovation, some people used to fall in some kind of innovation, if he hides his innovation and tries to look in a different shape, we would know about his reality from his closest friends. SubhanAllah. Because, okay, who he hangs around, he, has, he hangs around with a person who has an innovation, he has a problem with his religion, with his understanding of the religion of Al-Islam. Yeah. So, but when he comes to us, everything is okay. But his closest friend is someone who has this innovation and they are very close to each other this means he's hiding something yeah you can't hide it yeah so they said so. anyone who hides his innovation from us it would show in his friends mm. his companions so it's a very important aspect Some, sometimes yeah. there's even people that you feel that they has a mixture of dunya and religion of uh, of this life material life and you can find them with people that are attached to this life and you can find them with religious people well, Whoa, yeah. when, when, when you mix with people, well, being a practicing person doesn't mean that you do away with everything in this life. No, you take the halal thing. As Allah said, وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Don't forget or don't abandon what Allah has made halal for you in this life. You can take it and enjoy it, mm, but not without falling into sin. So the practicing person is a person whose main concern is about winning the pleasure of Allah. Mm -hmm. Because our objective is paradise. But it doesn't mean that we do away with the halal things that Allah has given us. No. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I fast and I break my fast. Some days I fast, sometimes, some days I don't do. Some, and I marry women. It's halal. And he said, I stand up in prayer some nights and some nights I don't do that. So, and we have seen and come across people who were very good. They had very good character. They started mixing with other people who have a bad character. Then so started to go down. gradually, gradually they became like those evil By ones. Time, yeah, sure. Subhanallah. You slip in it. And, and, and the opposite, of so course. So you see, yeah. Islam, the opposite. Yeah, yeah. Islam is guiding us mm -hmm. yeah. to that which improves our character and enhances our morality. Yeah. So these are beautiful teachings. Inshallah, inshallah we'll elaborate more on this, but uh, we'll have to stop for a few minutes. And we say to our viewers, sure. we'll come back shortly, inshallah. So stay with us. Are you up to date with the latest gadgets and devices? Or do you get confused when someone even mentions the word computer? Conquer your fear and learn how to get the best out of the latest computer software, smartphones and the latest cutting edge technology by tuning into Tech Talk with Dr. Baha. All of this and more in Tech Talk, only on Hoda TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Now, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed us and demonstrated to us in a beautiful story that most of us know the importance of the people 
that you mix with. For example, we know the man who killed 99 people and he, asked, he wanted to repent to Allah and he asked about the most knowledgeable of people on earth because he wanted him to guide him in his repentance. So he went to him, they took him to a priest and the priest said to him, you have no tawbah, no way Allah will accept your repentance. So he killed him and became a hundred people that he killed. And then after that he asked for the most knowledgeable of people and he was sent to a scholar. So the scholar said to him, no one prevents you from tawbah. Allah will accept that if you are sincere. But you are in a land of evil. You are in a town where people are evil. They are sinners. So there's another town, move to that, where people are righteous. See the importance of the people around you? Yeah. And if you want to repent and those around you, they are, are sinners, as long as you, are, you remain with them, you have to give them advice. As long as you remain with them, then one day, definitely you will do away with your repentance. You will have to be inclined towards them because this is human nature. The people you hang around with, you have to follow their way. So you see the importance of, of who are the people around you. You will follow their, their example, definitely. So always try to surround yourself with righteous people as Allah directed the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said وَأَعْرِضْ عَمَّنْ تَوَلَّا عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَلَمْ يُرِدْ إِلَّا الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا And turn away from anyone who turned away from our remembrance. Yeah. And his, own, his main concern or his objective became what? This life and its pleasures. Muhammad, do you have something to add here? Uh, uh, this is a, a thing that's in every community. You find good people and bad people, mm -hmm. practicing and non-practicing. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good sign that you have to search for a, a practicing uh, brotherhood and to, uh, to, be, to be around with them. Something uh, good as you, you always add. Yani, it's a priority yeah. actually. It yeah. is a priority yeah. because you need that. Without these friends, it's really hard. And it's going yeah. to be really hard. And actually when, when someone gets to be more religious, for example, for instance, if he was in Jahiliya in, in a way and he starts changing his friends mm -hmm. to so that it helps him it's it's a really hard period subhanallah yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's an indication also for the parents to see uh, whom uh, the kid hangs around with that's a very yeah. good point yeah. as well that's yeah. very it helps really the parent yeah it helps, it, the, it it helps the parents yeah because each one of us uh, someday inshallah will be a parent so uh, yeah. you get experience okay we will move now to talk about uh, another beautiful aspect of uh, brotherhood and its importance which the prophet sallallahu alaihi used to do we can see today that people don't know other people's names. Well, now acquaintance has become only by face. Well, do you know that person? Yeah, I know him. I know his face, but I don't know his name. Even if you come to the people's neighbors, <laughs> if I ask you, do you know all your neighbors by name? No, no. I say, well, <laughs> most likely it's going to, the answer is going to be no. So why is that? This is from, this is, it brings a sense of alienation amongst people. Mm -hmm. Because a person likes to be called by his name. If I say Muhammad, if I say oh, brother or something or whatever name, he doesn't like it. But when you say Muhammad, he will hearken, he will listen. It's more personal. Yes, yeah, so it brings yeah. you closer, so it makes better brotherhood. What do you think the situation is? Do you think we have been affected by other cultures? Because that wasn't the case in, at the early time of Muslims. Abdul Rahman, what do you think? I think uh, we got affected in a way. Mm -hmm. And I think also... It's, it's a disorganization because th there's more and more people, the population grew up. Okay, that's so one reason. So uh, they're, they're starting to even call people with numbers. Yeah, but... I'm 001, yeah. 002... Um, even yeah. though people are increasing in number and there is more population. It's, what it's, I mean, it's not, about it's your not, neighbors. It's not an excuse, of course. Neighbors. It's not an <laughs> excuse, now, yeah. yeah. It is about people becoming more self-centered. Yeah. Exactly. So, but the Prophet ﷺ one day, so um, awesome. an envoy came to him, a tribe came as Muslims. So they came to the Prophet ﷺ so awesome. to announce their Islam. And when the Messenger ﷺ saw them, he so said, Man al -qawm, Who are the people? This is a way of honoring somebody who's coming. So it's good to ask your brother about his name when you meet him for the first time. So they said, Rabi'ah, we are the tribe of Rabi'ah. So he said, Ni'ma al -qawm, What a good people you are. So this is the way the Prophet ﷺ used to deal with so the awesome. people. So it's from the Sunnah, when you meet a brother for the first time, you ask him about his name. You ask him where he comes from. This is good information. It, 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 makes, it, it opens a path or, uh, between two people so that they can have this mutual love amongst themselves. So it is from the Sunnah to know the other pe person's name. Now, if you look at the state of the people, most of us, we don't know our, even our neighbors' names. We don't know them. We say, oh, I know that, that man by face. I don't really know his name. This is quite common today. 
Did you notice any something like that? That it wasn't the case, by the way, during the early days of Islam. People used to know one another. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to recall people from the time of Jahiliyyah. And he even sometimes he had heard of some people, so whenever they came, he said, you are so and so. But they, he had never met them before. This is from the, the good way of, good character, good way of dealing with people. Have you noticed that today? And how can you see that? This thing is going among the people that they have been affected by other cultures. That it's regard, true. Muhammad. Yeah, it's quite not uh, noticeable. I actually been mixing with the countryside people, mm -hmm. and I've noticed this. They stick to this uh, sunnah, inshallah. Uh, they know uh, everyone in town. Okay, in the, the countryside. Name, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, apart from the city, uh, in yeah. the city, it's like away from the the sunnah and practicing this uh, matter. The, the city is kind of more materialistic and capitalistic. Yeah. So that affects that concept. Yeah, yeah. People are more inclined. People are more numbers. Or yeah, to mind their own business, and, and they don't have the this mutual love. They yeah. don't even have this relationship. brother once. Yeah. Uh, God bless him. He, he used to have a lot of kids. He even yeah. used to forget some of the name of his kids. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. <laughs> okay. It's it's kind of uh, affected by the media. I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of uh, yeah. issues. Uh, have yeah. Been yeah. Yeah. So, inshallah, we will try to implement the sunnah so that we have this brotherhood amongst our brothers and people. They feel happy when they see you after a long time and you call them by their names. Mm -hmm. It leaves a very good. Uh, feeling in the heart of that person. Another thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guided us to is to be moderate in your love. Moderation at tawassut is something very fundamental in Islam. To be moderate in everything you do. Mm. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that especially in terms of relationship when you have brotherhood or friendship with someone the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ahbib habibaka hawnan ma Love your brother in moderation. Be moderate. Maybe he will be someone that you will hate. So be moderate. Uh, what, what do you mean exactly by, by We moderate. will come, we will explain this. Let me just finish the hadith. Mm -hmm. And then the Prophet said, so, so. and hate the one you hate moderately. Don't be excessive in that. Because one day he may be someone you have love for, someone you love. Now this is from the wisdom that Allah has granted Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, so. And this is a principle so, so. in human uh, relationships it's, true. it's very important when you love a, you ask the question how is that or what do you mean by that mm -hmm. you have a friend a close friend you love that friend and you have love for him you don't you are not excessive in that how is it for example you have a good relationship with this brother and he wants for example to drink alcohol one day and he says to you let's let's try it let's try it just once and see how it feels just see how it feels this is how these things start Okay, now he's inciting you, he's taking you to falling into a sin. Now, would you give precedence to your love, that, or the love you have for him, or to, the, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to religion? Of course, to Allah. That's it, so you don't be excessive in your love. You don't mm -hmm. give it precedence over love for Allah. So you're moderate in that. Another aspect, you don't open up completely your character to that person. Mm -hmm. So you tell him all your secrets, everything about your life. Because he may get to be my enemy one day. That's it. Exactly. So yeah. you are always on the safe side. Uh -huh. And we are human beings. Sometimes maybe something wrong, something wrong will happen to him and he will turn into an enemy. So he doesn't know everything about you, all the secrets, the things that you won't like your enemy to know about. And even when you hate the person that you hate, hate him in moderation. Be moderate. Because one day maybe circumstances Allah through his decree will make you come together and love mm -hmm. one another you exactly. Don't know. exactly so you account for everything before it happens this is these are beautiful things it really helps the relationship so even when you I mean sometimes we see that friends they get really very very close to each other that it is almost they worship one another that anything I tell my friend he does that no this is not from an Islam Anything my, my friend tells me to do, first of all, is it in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah? If it's okay, Alhamdulillah, I'll see. Is it beneficial? Is it right to do it? Then after, this is how we look at these things. This is how we consider them. So don't be excessive in your love. You'll be moderate. You'll be moderate. Have you come across an incident maybe or an example or you have been through an experience during your life that you love a person 
maybe excessively and then you regretted that or have you heard of a story something like that actually uh, once I had a friend of mine it wasn't really a friend he, he and he we didn't used to get along and there used to be like this kind of little hate between us yeah because of someone who who, who backstabs me and and then one day and he, the truth alhamdulillah came up so he knew that that person is bad so it, it became the whole opposite he became a good friend yeah. we became good yeah. friends because he knew who, who who we really are yeah and that person khalas we knew wh what about him subhanallah so subhanallah. This, this happens yeah yeah well the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah gave him wisdom mm -hmm. and this thing to be moderate in everything we do this is what we call the middle course the middle course in al-islam mm -hmm. this is a very important thing in everything we do all the things we do we need moderation in them and there's a wisdom behind that as well sometimes you love a person and your relationship becomes strong so uh, about that sometimes you don't know what is inside the heart of this person maybe he pretends to love you mm. he pretends to be a good friend of yours for an interest yeah you don't know this mm. is why you have to guard yourself you have to account for even evil things when they happen exactly. and as we said before that people change so we can see that Islam through its teachings it wants the relationship to be strong and to be ideal sort of ideal so the Muslim community becomes strong, society becomes strong and the individual himself he I mean he looks after his own affairs and he does that which is good for himself and his family so we can see now inshallah that sure. Islam pays a lot of attention to this beautiful relationship of brotherhood and it provides us with the guidance to maintain it and improve it so inshallah we will benefit from these hadiths and we'll try to implement them in our daily life and by that we have a stronger brotherhood and we have a better society. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all and thank, thank our guests, Amen. Brother Abdul Rahman and Brother Muhammad. And we thank our dear viewers for their patience and for staying with us. And at the end I say, be in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.